I think we all agree that it's been a year of if-onlys for Takayasu thus far. If only he'd beaten Meisei, Shodai, and Tobizaru in March instead of May, he would have won his first title. And sadly, despite an impressive start, this theme continued in July. If only he hadn't overdone it in the final pre-tournament practice. If only he'd fought the full 15. Then, surely, he would have got the 10 wins required to continue his Ozeki run. It's never easy diving in on day 3 when others are better warmed up and acclimatized. Which is why his first performance deserves such praise, against a strangely fired up Ichinojo who had won his first two. Pleasingly, after his right parry failed, Takayasu did not fall to the Aoyama-style slapdown, keeping left knee well forward, then switching to right knee defense until his outside left was secured, empowering the left leg to drive. Endo, we now know, was injured and not a credible foe, who almost couldn't wait to touch down once swung out of position and pinned from above. His injury aggravated, Endo withdrew after this bout. But Takayasu's third bid for successive wins over Meisei also ended in misery. The smaller man fencing from distance, knocking him forward, and seizing the limp left arm with gusto. Come day 15, this would prove to be a crucial loss. At the time, the Ibaraki man bounced back, extending his record against Dai Eisho to 10-3 with a downward parry from shoulder height. He perhaps inevitably lost a fourth bout straight to Takanosho, his left armpit breached, his right elbow pinned, but then won his next four. A determined inside left and left knee deployment on Mitake Umi reaped rewards when his fellow Sekiwake offered up his belt. then failed to kick himself free, and finally allowed Taka's head underneath the chin. <laughs> Next, fine defense against Hokuto Fuji's flying neck shot saw footing recovered, a strong pin of the left triceps, and a well-timed backward step for the slapdown. A more composed and mature display against Wakataka Kage was capped with a skillful cradle and throw at the rope. Before some equally thoughtful thrusts on Tobizaru paved the way for a slapdown which gave him seven wins from the nine matches fought. But if only he'd beaten those two men in March. And if only he'd survived this bout, giving him the comfort of a winning score ahead of his three final daunting fixtures. Just as in May, it was a long, hard, tactical battle with several standstills. At one stage, causing him to discard the Mongolian's beads in exasperation. But unlike in May, Takayasu lost when Kiribayama developed the desired oblique stance and upward hitting angle with head hammering neck. And I wonder if this three-minuter asked too much of his hips. Against the dazzling skills of Hakuho, his condition was difficult to tell, but he seemed keen to pull out of this shoving battle. Oh, 
and was clearly in lower back pain here. Four devastating defeats to finish left Takayasu 7-6 and six with two absences, thus sealing his demotion. Third rank counterpart Mitake Umi did fight the full 15, but hardly fared much better, winning only seven bouts in the flesh. Despite being overwhelmed in the opener with Ichi no Jo, analyzed in the link above, Mitake began flattering to deceive, connecting well with Takanosho's throat and with his right boring through, doing excellent work with the left arm block and clamp. He then struggled for position against Hokuto Fuji and his possessed outside left, before using two inside arms to heartily rally and scoop from underneath. <laughs> then subsequently spearing Tobizaru with a right-sided attack, and picking up this default over Endo, which ultimately saved his rank. Against Meisei though did the wheels start to come off. The man to whom he never lost until May, relentlessly clubbing him with the right, before jerking to the left for the finish. Although his face got further used to the feel of Dai Eisho's hands, he stayed cool enough to sidestep, retreat, and keep landing his own right until his foe fell forwards. That 19th defeat in 25 to Takayasu ensued though, and an easy win over forlorn interloper Kotoeko could not mask the loss of belief. It seemed to drain from him even after defeat number two. A first ever slapdown humbling by Shodai was followed by a meek surrender to Terono Fuji, and a one-sided battle with Hakuho's divine inside right. In the end, only the awfulness of injured Okinomi arrested the slide. Before a startlingly accomplished display in this first meeting with Ho Shoryu, telling thrusts and a sublime belt grip break, brought up his winning score. His final day showing against University Junior Wakataka Kage though, who sees him as a god, perhaps now a demigod, was just awful. His bouncing legs producing insufficient power and ripe for pulling off balance. Mitake would normally expect more vocal backing in Nagoya given its ease of access for fans from his native Nagano, but Covid deterred most of them from coming. Only huge scores in both September and November can possibly take him to Ozeki before his 29th birthday. Yet he doesn't seem too bothered by the words TikTok. <laughs>